Anyway, Hans is the VP and CIO of the Global Functions of Shell International. He joined Shell in 1979 um, into the IT function and uh, found that not exciting enough, so moved into accounting and finance. Uh, but now it's exciting again, so he's back. And he, he came back into the IT function to head up the global functions at the time that the IT for IT idea was born. So um, before Shell, he worked for the, spent time with the UN uh, in Swaziland and Italy. With Shell, he's been in the exploration, production, and chemical areas in places like Brunei obviously. Rotterdam, which is the head office, yeah. Uh, Aberdeen, we all know about North Sea Oil. And Gabon, yeah. So, uh, very widely travelled, very experienced executive, many years in, in Shell. Please give a big warm open group welcome, Hans van Kestelen. I missed a bit of the communication. We have an evacuation there. Where would we go? So hopefully you've got the little green signs in your head. Um, one thing I like to reflect on is: um, is something not working? You dropped it. Oh, I dropped it. <laughs> Fortunately, I've got a loud voice. So yes, you're doing well. There you go, sir. Put in pocket, maybe. Good. Um, I was recently in San Francisco for a week uh, where we visited a number of our suppliers and in the weekend I was driven by a chauffeur to Napa Valley which I can really recommend, very good wine. And uh, the chauffeur driver was actually during the, tri the trip resetting his navigator and I had some very uh, sort of scary moments. So a plea to you is if you have a navigator in the car, do not fiddle with it when you're driving. It seems trivial. Uh, but uh, you could get yourself in a, bear, a bad car, car crash. The second thought I was, want to share with you before I get into the sort of meat of my presentation, I was linking in with, I guess, what we heard from Magnus and thought, well, what I'm going to tell, say, talk about not really about uh, competition, and I'll say a few words about that. It's almost also not really about create, although you could argue we did quite a bit of work uh, in preparing for this launch uh, to date. Uh, but it sits sort of in the middle, because if you can't get your, house, your, your fundamentals working well, you can't liberate resources uh, to do the real stuff, which will give you a competitive ad or move up uh, vertically. The other thing I was uh, really delighted to hear, I, I was thinking about myself, well, I'm very close to retirement. It's for me very easy to step out of the company and actually do some interesting stuff. So uh, perhaps a few light bulbs uh, uh, and for me to start my own business. I've also had the privilege of being in this business for about 40 years. I still remember the first computer I worked on was in 75. It was a cyber from the CDC company. Uh, it was half a megabyte memory, so it looked a bit like uh, the, sort of the five megabyte drive you saw early on the picture. It used, you, it, you, we had an immense big hole, air-conditioned, and that's where this big machine sat. So needless to say that I have seen an enormous change, and I talk to younger people today, I say change is not something of the last five years. Uh, it's been with us for the last 40 years, and that makes it a very exciting era to, uh, to work in. Um, in my capacity as Global Functions CIO, uh, I look after 20 functions in Shell. They're all globally organized, and IT actually is one of them, and it's the largest. Uh, and so when I joined, uh, or went into my role, um, I quite quickly bumped into Karl van Zeeland, our lead architect, and he had this vision and, can, and said to me, basically, Hans, can you support it? Because I think we've got a great gap to fill here. And um, he had a very convincing story, and so since 2011, I've had the privilege to support him uh, and the early work on this. And I'm very, uh, personally very excited about that we are now at the stage that we can launch a forum, because my belief is that uh, we need more parties to contribute to what I think is going to be essentially a very important bit of standardization work uh, we need to have, and I'll come a bit back to that earlier on, or later on, sorry. 
Um, we didn't quite start in 1911, uh, by the way. It was 2011, uh, Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, but it did take some did t take some incubation time uh, <laughs> to get where we are. A full century, that's interesting. Uh, good. I will uh, give a bit of uh, context. I'll tell you a bit about Shell and IT in Shell uh, to, uh, I guess, make the business case for us a bit alive. So uh, bear with me. I'll take a few minutes to talk about Shell. Um, and in case uh, you would decide to either sell or buy Shell, shell stock after my story, uh, you're on your own. That's what it basically says. It's a waiver. <laughs> I will not give you the time to read it, but believe me, uh, we need to put this in. So what is Shell? Now, I hope the technology will work. And it does. <laughs> shell is exact, effectively, it's got two parts, an upstream and a downstream part. For those who are not uh, familiar to the oil company, uh, it starts with looking for oil and gas, uh, developing it, exploiting it, and then it goes into the downstream world where you're talking about transition, uh, transport, and bringing it to the market. Um, simple picture, uh, quite complex business if you think about the fact that we drill wells in two to three thousand depth of, of sea. Uh, we put big installations in place in Sakhalin in Siberia. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about some of our innovations later on. So that's Shell in a nutshell. Um, uh, it is truly a global, uh, global uh, organization, as you all will know. Uh, we employ about uh, 87,000 people, actually, on our payrolls. If we would actually count all the people who actually work for us, we're probably more than a million. Uh, and uh, we have a tradition of working through many suppliers uh, and will continue to do so. So that's also the case in IT, by the way. Two thirds of our labor force are from suppliers and probably even a bit larger. I would like to focus on the 1.3 billion we spent on uh, R&D. Uh, we uh, believe we only have a, a, a competitive place if we can actually keep innovating in the area we're already working. And we have got a pre, pre, uh, pretty decent track record, record. If you think about, uh, we were the first to do LNG in any big, big way. LNG is about liquefying fraction of gas, then transporting it to the market. We were the first to do uh, deep water drilling. Uh, and so we went to the Mexican Gulf as one of the first players. And recently, uh, we've gone live with a big GTL plant, which is converting gas into liquids. Again, a first. That's only possible if we actually invest significant dollars. IT plays a specific, quite a specific role in there, and we have actually got a separate department doing innovation work, so they're not hindered uh, by the rest of the organization, as it were. That's a bit, by the way, which is intellectual property. We will not put in any kind of standard. That's uh, where we want to compete. But the lion's share of our IT business is non-competitive and, and just good stable, table stakes. Um, the last thing I want to say about these statistics is 3.3 million barrels of equivalent per day. Uh, half of that actually is gas these days. It's probably around 3 or 4% of oil, world production, so it's not that big, uh, but still significant in size. Some people think of us as a sunset, uh, sunset industry, and here's a clear link with, uh, I think, Magnus, is if you just look at some of the statistics presented here, in 2050, we'll have 2 billion extra people on the globe. We will have probably twice the number of vehicles. A lot of people are not using energy these days, or not substantially, will move into the next age as well. So that will mean that we will double energy consumption uh, in this span of period. Uh, we will have to meantime half our CO2 emissions uh, to keep the environment sober or clean and we'll have to become twice as efficient. Of course, renewables will play a place, and who no God knows what else, uh, if I like, think about the sort of little bacteria, uh, but uh, hydrocarbons will take a significant share of that, if you just look at the extra extrapolating uh, our demand. So we're very much, I think, a crucial player uh, in um, a sector which is going to be very important for the future of the world economy. There's no doubt about it. And quite a big challenge which will require a lot of out-of-the-box thinking. So how does IT for us she sit in Shell? Uh, probably again a few statistics. Um, needless to say that IT for IT in Shell is business in its own right. We spend about $4.7 billion a year on IT. 
uh, and uh, you can see from these statistics uh, how sizable uh, the landscape and applications uh, we look after. And the story behind all of these data, uh, I just want to give you a sense of how important IT for IT is for Shell, because it's a significant amount of money, and of course we heavily rely on it as well. Just to pick up one figure, we have 8,000 applications, 500 of them are business critical, which means that if they're out of business for more than four hours, something stops. Uh, and so uh, there's obviously a lot of attention to make uh, sure that uh, we start up within a few hours when we actually have a problem. I think the 20,000 virus attacks uh, per day is also an interesting statistic, uh, just to highlight the challenge we have in that space. Uh, and uh, it's not only virus attacks we're subject to. So. Uh, again, I think an interesting statistic. So what does uh, this response, uh, what are the key challenges in this world? And uh, just pay your attention to the picture uh, in the background, which is uh, the sprawling city of Mexico, and probably an example uh, w w what happens if you lose control of your asset base. Uh, and that's why I've chosen that background. Um, if you look at the key challenges, uh, increasing demand, uh, and the growing asset base. We run about 1,000 projects per year. You imagine every project potentially adds infrastructure, adds middleware, adds licenses. So uh, that by itself is a big challenge. Uh, a rapidly advancing technology, you've heard a lot of this disruptive uh, technology, which is a word I'm not allowed to use anymore since I've listened to Magnus this morning. But anyway, you are no cloud services, uh, mobility, consumerization, uh, things of internet, uh, think about the in-memory in computing. There's so much happening at the moment, uh, so the landscape is changing dramatically. Increasing number of players, so if you look at the number of suppliers we were working with 10 years ago, we actually our core system has got 12 uh, suppliers. We see that rapidly expanding to all sorts of people who have also got a value proposition for the company. And um, the business has become increasingly dependent on our services, so I already mentioned the example of the 500 business critical systems. I don't have to say much about increasing risks, including cybercrime. You can read about that every day in the, uh, in the week. Um, business requires rapid deployment. It's interesting that we have uh, increasingly IT-aware co community uh, in the company who basically demand that we respond to the IT function quickly, otherwise they'll go out and buy their own solution. And that's the beginning of a disaster, thinking about the sprawling uh, city. Actually, we have quite a number of uh, business-managed uh, applications, and obviously we're paying a lot of attention to that. And then probably last but certainly not least, the increasing cost pressure. Under this growth, we see a huge growth, or significant growth, of our base cost. We've taken a lot of costs out over the last 10 years, but in spite thereof, the base cost rise actually overwhelms that. And as the company is not prepared to spend more than a particular limit, it starts crowding out our investments. So we need to think about a clever way of bending the base cost curve and, um, and making sure that we continue to invest as well. This points at a, a huge integration problem, is the way I would say it, and I think uh, Georg already has given a very elegant uh, example of the connects you have to make in this world. It's interesting that, ironically, I would almost say that we've invested in big ERP platforms for our business with a full integration proposition. However, for IT, we have not put any solution in place. So we're still working with spreadsheets and all sorts of loosely connected applications, struggling to make sense of the end-to-end -end life cycle of our IT products and services. Uh, Shell's IT strategy, uh, very simple terms, uh, has three bands. One is about delivering business outcomes. Uh, the three pillars in that, the technology bit, which is very much the proprietary stuff where we really want to make a difference. Uh, think about uh, seism processing of seismic data, uh, etc. Uh, of course, we want to deliver our projects uh, successfully, and we want to drive value with our existing platforms. And of course, there's a lot about data and process analytics, and so on. At the end of the road, the fundamentals are all around making sure we have reliable and secure uh, systems, and you should actually probably add affordable to that as well. And then we cannot do that without people, partners, and a community. Uh, we have, as I said already, 12 ecosystem partners, 
uh, and I see this as a community as well, which will be complementary uh, to what it is we're trying to do. All in all, I would say that we're taking much more of a, project, a, a portfolio approach than we have had in the past. We used to look at investments and then looking after them when they sort of uh, matured. We're now looking at our portfolios per function and per business to make sure that we see the cost, the value and the risks uh, looked after properly, which means that we make a new investment. We also need to take stuff out, otherwise we can't manage our, our base cost. So that brings me to uh, my last and probably most important slide is what's the case for action in terms of launching this IT for IT forum? And I always think that pictures tell uh, a lot uh, about where it is we want to go. If you think about a sprawling city, that's not where we want to be because that's uncontrollable. Uh, we want to get to a neatly organized town in which we have full control. Uh, think about uh, overall cost, uh, value, uh, proposition, also security. Yeah? So um, we fundamentally believe that most of the work we're doing in IT doesn't give us a competitive edge. And so it makes infinite sense to share what we are doing in this space with other companies. Uh, and so we have started on that journey in 2011. Um, we believe that, um, and I, if you look at the little red diagram, it actually describes in simpler terms uh, what a management system would look like through the full life cycle. It's going to be adamant that we have indeed full visibility of cost. And for those who've been involved in creating that in our business, you know how difficult it is. Probably even importantly, or maybe even more, more, more importantly, we need to know what value effectively our applications deliver. And then we've got also this uh, performance, uh, reliability and security challenge. So creating a management system around this, we believe, uh, will be a great value uh, proposition, not only for us, but for many uh, in the room. And we're very pleased to see a number of uh, parties already voting with their feet. So, in summary, standards will help us mature our industry and deal with the new challenges which I described to you. It will create a common language so we can best share best practices. It will uh, further uh, advance our professional professionalism. Uh, and of course, ultimately, and somebody was asking me to how long will that take, uh, we will have a common platform. So if we have a service provided or we buy a bit of software, it all fits in what we already have. So we don't have to worry about integrating at all. Now that's probably a vision which will be five or ten years ahead. Uh, but I think the benefits of getting into this uh, uh, open dialogue, um, I see, uh, will be quite immediate. And so I'm really looking forward to entering the dialogue with yourselves and really invite you to participate in this forum because I cannot see how you can do without, and frankly, or you could keep trying to find your own solutions, but I suggest that getting into this arena together with other companies would be of great benefit to your companies as well. So thank you for that.